morning everybody it's our metalhead weatherman here hopefully everyone's doing well so with all the uh, recent activity with the weather here we didn't get a chance to look at the weekly forecast here well that amongst other issues amongst the channel but who's keeping count it who's keeping score on that anyway let's go ahead and get into that forecast here so make sure you're hitting that like button definitely leave a comment and if you're new around here definitely uh, hit that subscribe button but that being said we already know what's expected for tomorrow's threat, the day two threat. We're not going to talk about that as much. We are going to go into the hazard types with that. We do have the slight risk still in effect. Not much has changed since yesterday, thankfully. But since we're within that 48 hour period, we can actually look at our hazards now. 5% tornado threat, and it's a little bit further to the north here. I was expecting this area to to be a little further to the south but i was also expecting for there to be a lot of changes this area may push back to the south it may not i think that we might be pushing a little bit more towards maybe a slight cold core setup because of the uh, progression of the trough and it's all and also it's a uh, axis with it um being more positively tilted sometimes you can have a little bit of trouble with that instability there but even then, I think this is also a very conditional 5% area. Could we get a few tornadoes? Yes, but I'm thinking we're mainly going to be leaning towards actually more of a hail and a wind threat, if anything. Especially on the hail threat where they have the hatch risk in play here. And this is going to include Chicago, just outside of Indianapolis. Fort Wayne, you're in there as well in parts of northwestern Ohio where we could see hail above 2 inches in diameter. And then also we have the 15% wind threat. If there is a chance of there being an enhanced risk, I do think hail or maybe wind might come into play. Storm still has solid kinematics, but it's definitely not the standout system that it was about maybe a week ago. But even so, we'll still go ahead and watch it. And we'll be actually covering this tomorrow as well on our channel live. So hopefully you tune in for that. Hopefully nothing cra too crazy happens, but we'll be here in case it does. That being said, if we go to day three, obviously there's no severe weather threat then. Pattern kind of takes a calm return for just a little bit, but right towards the end of this four to eight day period here, we start to get those predictability to low indicators popping up. And the setup for March 4th in particular actually has been said to be pretty gnarly looking. And this is the first time that we've taken a look at it on here. I've been kind of looking at it on and off here just trying to get set up to actually discuss that soon so today is when we will go into the details with that just a little bit since of course we're on the far end of the uh medium range scale here but this is what we are currently looking at with our troughs here this is the euro and the gfs that we are looking at we'll start with the euro and what we'll end up seeing here is that storm system not too much has really changed since yesterday and really i think this is still going to be an evening maybe an overnight type event it's, if anything it's kind of scaled back just a little bit but still nonetheless here i do see some potential for severe weather but as far as tomorrow's concerned uh following day is concerned it looks like the threat has really dropped off definitely a shell of what it once was where we had a day seven slight risk on this and as we continue to go forward here is where we start to get stable but once again we see that ridge starting to build up again and with that ridge those temperatures are going to warm more and then here comes this crazy looking trough does it play out like this i find that questionable euro's kind of pushing against it now definitely already starting to look different from what it was about a day or two ago it's kind of ironic that it's a lot like how this last system looked but even so maybe towards the fifth there could be a chance of severe weather depends on this the troughs uh tilt or uh, axis here and also the evolution of the trough as well i'm not really sure what i'm i'd make of this right now so i'm kind of on the fence about the fourth already it's ironic that literally the last system, this upcoming system was a lot like that too literally yesterday people were painting a doom and gloom scenario already but 
like I said, you always have to watch the models because what run, one run shows is not going to be conclusive here. It can easily change. So here's what we're looking at with that system again, this time on the GFS. Still see the same outcome occur after that storm system leaves. We start to see some ridging. But this actually looks a tiny bit better, but not by much. This really doesn't have a uh, impressive look in regards to severe weather, mainly due to large scale ascent. That warm air and that forcing just doesn't really seem to come together anymore. So, like I said, literally just as quick as it gets going, it turns it can turn the other way just as fast. So that's why you always look for continuity, folks. This does look like it could be a wintry system over here towards the seventh, but obviously with us looking past 10 days, I'm not gonna put a whole lot of merit into that. We're just gonna mainly be on for the most part looking for more ridges and then these little um, troughs right here, this little uh, small trough right here could be a problem maybe towards the Gulf Coast possibly during the middle of the month. But like I said, once we start getting past really five days, you always have to leave room for questions there. But of course, we're well past that point. We're getting close to two weeks out here. And by the end of that model, this model run here, we see a big ridge and then also a new trough that's popped up here as well. So plenty to watch for. Is it a guarantee that we'll get severe weather? Not quite. So with that in mind, let's take a look at how our temperatures will be affected by this. So we'll start out with the euro, of course. And of course, we know with this upcoming storm system out ahead of it in the warm sector it's going to be nice and hot over towards texas in particular towards the southeast we're going to be getting close to record highs if not breaking records depending on where you are variance could be by literally a few degrees then as we go through the following day we still end up being pretty warm across the southeast for the for uh wednesday here but by the time we get into thursday we're going to see a little shift in the temperatures here Brief little cold stint, but we warm right back up just in time for the weekend here. So should be a pretty nice weekend across the board. Once we get towards the start of next week, that's when that next storm system comes in. Like I said, not really stout looking right now, but still, like I said, we'll, we'll be starting to look more and more like spring by the time we get towards the end of the 10 day period here. So we go to the GFS, it's going to start out looking like a uh, pretty similar deal here. Since there's some decent continuity between these two models right now, we're probably not going to see too much difference. There will be a slight variance in temperature, especially as we start the month of March. Storm system looks a tiny bit better, but even so, like I said, the uh, it's just really going to be a cold front. Maybe we'll get some showers and storms at best right now. Severe weather isn't out the question, but I wouldn't guarantee it at this point, especially with what we've seen lately. As we go further beyond, it looks like we do try to get into a little miniature cold stint, but this, of course, does not last. We're getting out of the uh, we're getting out of the uh, depths of winter here. We're starting to push further and further into spring. Perhaps Poxitani Phil was right. But that being said here, wait, hold on a second. We do see some cold air coming back in, maybe towards the middle part of the month for the eastern half of the U.S. We did talk about that a little bit towards our uh, March outlook here, and another one will be coming soon, so stay tuned for that. But last but not least here, we'll wrap this thing up. We'll go ahead and take a look at what our precipitation could be like as we go through the next 10 to 16 days here. That's what the Euro is showing us right now. Here's our current storm system. Like I said, definitely a shell of what it once was where we were seeing a huge line of storms and maybe even a few supercells to just kind of scattered activity here and there. And then after that, see just a large sum of showers storms and we'll watch this maybe have a little bit of wintry potential over here towards the northern part of new england but it's going to be moving out faster than you can blink 
Then after that point, we'll have a couple other storm systems. And most of the tension is really going to be out towards the west at this point. Maybe we could see some stronger storms over here. But like I said, I just don't think things are going to be coming together here. This warm sector just is not looking all that impressive at this point. But we'll have to, to see how things pan out as time goes on. Maybe towards the 5th, I'm a little bit more suspicious of that. But even then, it's already kind of has that messy convective look to it at the moment. We'll have to see how that evolves as time goes on. Go to the GFS. It's going to be pretty much a similar deal starting out. Really, I'm interested to see what's ahead after that 10-day period. But of course, like I said before, can't put a lot of merit into it. A sneaky little uh, storm system over here that pops up around the beginning of March, bringing some showers and the storms into play. And then after that point, like I said, getting a nice little plume of moisture return. You can even see it on this uh, precipitation map here. But the issue is just large scale ascent in general. That lift that you would need for severe weather just doesn't seem to be there. Just out of position. And then as we continue to go forward, here's our next system. Looking like it has a decent bit of wintry potential for the Midwest. And then after that point. We'll see this little storm system right here that I'm, that I'm somewhat interested in at the 300 hour mark. And then after that point, we're looking uh, rather calm for the most part. We do see a sneaky little trough try to bring in a little bit of chilly weather towards the eastern half of the U.S. at the end of it. But I don't see that lasting for an extended period of time here. So like I said... Weather's been moving, the uh, weather models have been moving around a lot here in regards to the weather. So we're just going to have to make updates as needed here. A lot of uh, model madness, if you will, going on. But that being said, hope you guys enjoyed this short, this uh, shorter video. Uh, if you did, you know what to do. Leave a like and a comment. If you're new around here, definitely consider subscribing. And I'll see you later this evening to discuss that severe weather threat tomorrow in full. Until then, take care. Have an awesome day. Tired Metalhead Weatherman here signing off.